Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hi everyone. So in this video we are going to continue on chapter 2 that is about capacitor and dielectric. In this topic we will cover three subtopics that are capacitance and capacitors in series and parallel, charging and discharging of capacitors and capacitors with dielectrics. So for 2.1 we will cover the capacitance and capacitors in series and parallel. So in this video, we are going to define the capacitance, which is C equals to Q over V, and derive the effective capacitance of capacitors in series and parallel. And also derive the energy stored in a capacitor. Let's see what is the capacitor capacitor is a device that is capable of storing electric charges or electric potential energy it comes in different shapes and sizes we can use it in variety of electric circuits we can have two conductors separated by small air gap or a tin insulator called dielectric to look on capacitor it has conductor, aluminum, silver or other metals and it has gap, a thin gap that been inserted by a dielectric. The conducting plates could be in the shape of cylindrical, spherical or parallel plate and the symbol for this capacitor in the circuit will be either true parallel line or this shape. And what is capacitance? Capacitance is a measure of the ability of a capacitor to store a charge. So capacitance is the ability to store charges. So we can also make it in the derived in an equation form, which is the ratio of charge and potential difference, which is C equals to Q over V. And it is a scalar quantity, the unit is farad, or because the equation is Q over V, we can also write it as Coulomb per voltage. And 1 farad is defined as the charge of 1 Coulomb stored on each of the conducting plates, as it, it has 2 parallel plates, so in each of the plates, it stores charge of 1 Coulomb, as a result of a potential difference of one, wo one volt in between of them. The capacitance for a capacitor does not change unless it is designed to be a variable capacitor. So for each capacitance, capacitor, it will have the same uh, capacitance. The equation of capacitance is C equals to Q over V. And when we rearrange it to make the Q, which is the charge as a subject, we will get, we will notice that we can get our charge is directly proportional to our potential difference. Meaning, any capacitor with a large capacitance can hold more charges where the capacitance is also directly proportional to the charge. So, large capacitance can hold more charges with the same potential difference. If we compare these two capacitor, it has different capacitance. One with 2200 microfarad and another one is 1000 microfarad. And when we give, provide them with the same potential difference, which is 2 volt, we can notice that a higher capacitance will have a higher charge, meaning it store a larger charge. Let's look at the capacitor. How do we calculate the capacitance when this capacitor is arranged in a series circuit? When it is in series circuit, Regardless of their capacitance, 
all of this capacitor will have the same amount of charge, the same magnitude of charge. So if we have two capacitor rearranged in a series, these two capacitor will have the same charge. And the total voltage that they have is shared between the capacitors, meaning the total voltage will be the voltage across first the first capacitor plus the voltage across the second capacitor. And we substitute in the equation where voltage potential difference equals to Q over C the C is capacitance and we can calculate the capacitance effective capacitance which is CE the effective capacitance and we will get to an equation of 1 over capac effective capacitance equals to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 so this is the equation that related to the capacitor being arranged in a series circuit. So generally, if we have n number of capacitor, we just have to add the n number of capacitor 1 over Cn to get the effective capacitance in a series circuit. And for the series circuit, value of the effective capacitance is always smaller than the smallest capacitance in the com combination. And now we will continue to capacitors in parallel. When the capacitor is arranged in parallel, they will have the same voltage across their plate and the charge in them will be different. So the total charge will be the, the summation of individual charge across each capacitor. And when, we, and when we rearrange this equation, we will get effective capacitor multiplied by potential difference equals to the capacitance of the first capacitor multiplied by the potential difference because the potential difference is equal for all the capacitor in parallel so we multiply by V plus C2 multiplied by V and we will get that the effective capacitance is equals to summation of individual capacitor capacitance of each capacitor we cross out the equal voltage and we will get CE equals to C1 plus C2. Generally, for n numbers of capacitors connected in parallel, the effective capacitance is given by this, meaning we just add on the n numbers of capacitor that we have in the circuit. The thing that we have to determine when we have a circuit is either the circuit is in parallel, the capacitor is being arranged in parallel or series circuit and then we can use either of this equation. And for parallel, for the effective capacitance, the value of effective capacitance is always larger than the largest individual capacitance in the combination. And the last part for 2.2 one sub for this subtopic is the energy stored in a charge capacitor. When a capacitor store charges, it also store energy. So there will be a small amount of work is done in bringing a small amount of charge from the battery to the capacitor. And therefore we can rearrange this equation and we will get dW equals to VdQ because the dW is a small amount of work is done and the potential difference multiplied by the dQ, the small amount of charge from the battery to the capacitor. And we substitute in the equation of potential difference equals to Q over C and we will get this equation 
and we will integrate the equation to get the total work done required to increase the accumulated charge from 0 to Q and we will have this equation as shown in the screen. And finally, when we integrate that and we get the total work required and we will have our work done to bring a small amount of charge from the battery to the capacitor equals to half Q squared over C. And the work done to charge it W appears as energy stored in the capacitor U. And therefore, the energy stored in a capacitor equals to half Q squared C. And from here, we can use the equation of C equals to Q over V and derive a few more equations where we will have half Q squared over Q over V equals to U equals to half QV and also U equals to half CV squared. Let's look at the example in determining the effective capacitance of this circuit. We have the information here that all the capacitors are identical and each has a capacitance of 2 microfarad. So we have the capacitance as 2 microfarad and they are all identical. Let's determine whether they are rearranged in series or parallel. First, we have to label the capacitor as numbering them. So we will have C1 until C7. You can start your calculation or determining your capacitor from the, la from the left to the right terminal. And look at here in your circuit that C1 C2 and C3 are connected in series. Therefore, the equation that we will use here is to get the effective capacitance is 1 over C effective equals to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 and plus 1 over C3. And from here, we label it as Cx. And then, we look at the circuit again and we will get that Cx and C4 are connected in parallel. And we can find its effective capacitance first by adding the capacitance of each of the capacitor, which is the Cx plus C4. And we get a new capacitance and we can label it as Cy. And now we have CY and another three capacitor. So this CY, C5 and C6 are arranged in series. Then we can calculate the equation as 1 over C effective and add all the capacitance. And we will get it as CZ. And now finally to get the total see a uh, effective capacitance for the whole circuit we left with cz and c7 we will do uh, we will determine whether they are in series or in, par in parallel so when we look at the circuit we will see that cz and c7 are in parallel so we will just add the amount of capacitor of cz and c7 and we will get the effective capacitance for this circuit. And it is given by 30 over 11 microfarad. And for the second example, a 4 microfarad and 6 microfarad capacitor connected in series. So we are known that they are connected in series are charged by a 240 volt power supply. So we have to calculate the charge on each capacitor. 
the potential difference across each capacitor and the total energy stored in each capacitor. For the first one, since they are connected in series, we can find their effective capacitance. The combined capacitance for two capacitors in series will be 1 over effective capacitance equals to 1 over the capacitance of the first capacitor plus 1 over the capacitance of the second capacitor. Because they are in series, their charge are equal. And so they are in series, so they are e their charge are equal. So Q total equals to Q1 equals to Q2. And we have the equation of C equals to Q over V. And we rearrange that and make the charge as a subject. And we will have Q equals to CV. And we substitute in the cap effective capacitance that we have found previously. And also the potential difference for this circuit that is 240. And you will get the charge for it. Individually, to get the potential difference across each capacitor, we will use the equation of the capacitance C equals to Q over V and rearrange it as we are looking for potential difference. So the V will be our subject. So V1 equals to Q over C1 and we will get as 144 volt for the first capacitor. And for the second capacitor, V2 equals to Q over C2 and it is given by 96 volt. And to get its total energy stored individually for 4 microfarad capacitor and 6 microfarad capacitor, we need to substitute in the equation of the energy stored of W equals to half QV. Why do we use half QV when we have the other equation as well? Because the information that we have is for the charge and also potential difference. So it's easy for us to use this equation. You can also use it as C and also V to get the total energy stored in each of these capacities. So that's all for this subtopic 2.1 and we will continue for 2.2 in the next video. Thank you for watching and listening to this video.